We are backstage with Noel Gallagher at the NIA before his gig in Birmingham. Are we? I think so. Birmingham, wow. I've been following the progress on your tour diary online. Oh, it actually reminds me, I've not done it for a while. I've fucking missed a week somewhere, yeah. Yeah, after the Brit Awards, by the looks of things. Yeah, it's been a strange 10 days, yeah. Where you found a, what was it, a shoe and an... No, I stole that. All right. I stole the shoe. The shoe's all right. It's got pride of place in the, in the playroom at home now. Not my playroom, obviously, the kids' playroom. But the eight grand watch is still a mystery. Is it on? It's not on your arm, is it? No. No, it's in. A, it's it's at home in a box, waiting to be claimed. Or oh, it's just not going to be claimed. It's going on eBay as soon as I can get a picture of it with me, with it on my arm. Someone's actually claimed it on your website. They've oh, uh, really? under, under your diary post. They've gone. Oh, it's mine. Yeah. No, I doubt it. I've seen that. It could be. It was a very very drunken night. It was a very drunken night. And who did you <clears> think <throat> was was miming at the Brits? It wasn't you? Well, it wasn't me. Everybody was singing live. <clears throat> There's a few geezers playing guitar there that weren't playing the guitar. Right. And I was very disappointed that we didn't get the duet with Ollie Murs in the end, which you promised everybody at the start. Well, Cheeky did champion. you see his dancers, though? Bloody hell. Why can't I have dancers like that? Well, you could. I could, couldn't I? wonder what the missus would say. It's your show. 30-piece choir instead. They're not wearing red PVC leotards and fishnet tights and high heels, though. More's the pity, one would have to say. Well, here's an idea for the next tour. Yeah. God, I've got to get some dancers. So, the Enemy Awards were last night, and oh, you yeah. were... You, you remember them? Yes. Yeah? Godlike genius. Yes. How does it feel to be a godlike genius? I felt this way for a long time, from a very young age. Maybe since I was about <clears throat> five, I think, and I just didn't do my own work one night. I just thought, f*** it, I'm not doing it. And the teacher said, why haven't you done your own work? I said, I don't need to. I'm done here now. Because you are a godlike genius. Well, not that. There was, you know, glue to be sniffed and stuff like that. So that was kind of, you know, that's what took up most of my time after I was about 13. But there was a period in between where I became a genius. It's not quite clear when that happens. Between five and 13. But, um, yeah, so I've been, I felt like this for a while. It's tough, I've got to say. It's tough being a godlike genius. It's tough. Do you get any extra powers by being a godlike genius? Can you smite somebody down? If I wanted. I'm not like that, though. No one in mind? Not really. No, no, no. The weather, you know the weather? It's nice today. I can control that if I want. You've brought sunshine to Birmingham. There you go. I rest my case. What about world peace? I thought maybe if you didn't smite no, somebody down, about, you might no, use your powers for good. world peace. A bit of war is good, isn't it? No? Well, I don't know. Sort some men out from the boys, doesn't it? I suppose so. I think it's good. Never thought about a bit of war yourself? Verbally, yeah. War of words, that's me. Built a career on that shit, mate. You, you haven't got much of a war going on with anybody at the moment, have you? Apart from the obvious. <clears throat> you, you Which seem is, to be, who's the obvious? Well, a certain sibling. Oh, no, there's nothing going on there. Nothing going on there. No, I'm not in a war of words with anybody at the moment, which is more the pity. I should have really started one at the NME Awards last night. I did have the attention of the whole room and a microphone. And the Kaiser Chiefs were there. What did you say to them? Nothing. I said thank you very much for my award. You know? No godlike genius kind of proclamations. Well, that's like... <clears throat> I'm not allowed to use my godlike genius against other people. It's like being a black belt in karate and using karate on just bystanders outside pubs. Not a done thing. The authorities don't, they don't really look kindly on that kind of shit. Okay. Not that there's a higher authority than me, but there are other godlike geniuses that habit the same aura. Who would you say is on your, on your godlike me, genius level? Weller, Bono, Ian Brown, Sean Ryder, uh, Primal Scream, I think have been godlike geniuses. The Cure. <laughs> We're trying to get them out, but, you know, they've got their feet well under the table now. Paul, Paul McCartney. Macca, yeah. What can I say? On your level. All the greats. OK. B-Sides, is, you're sort of back on form with the B-Sides. I was listening to something yesterday. Do you like reckon? A seven-minute... Is that the first taste of your next album's kind of style? Well, it's the... Uh, well, I, I don't talk about records until they're finished, but that's the first track that's finished from my collaboration with the Amorphous Androgynous, yeah. And it's a B-side on the next single. It's a B-side on the next single, Dream On. Yeah. It might be my favourite piece of music that I've ever done. I love working with those guys. We do good stuff together. It's a it's a long and laborious process, though. 
with those fellas. Because it's Cause a remix. Like, well, isn't no, it? it's not a remix. That's that. Well, the suit holding to the sun. Yeah, it's not a remix. Kind of. It's not even kind of a remix. It uses bits. What bits? Bits from your first album, doesn't it? No, it doesn't at all. It's, it's completely different chords. Okay. It's not nothing that's on that track is on If I Had A Gun, if that's what you're referring yeah. to. Yeah, none of it. There might be a few lines sung in a different key. Okay. But it's not in any way... It's a different song completely. Okay, what I was getting at is that the next album is not going to be sort of like a, a an interesting remix project of the first. No, 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 no. There's that version of uh, If I Had A Gun and there's, there's another finished version of What A Life, which mm-hmm. is great. There's a version of The Death Of You And Me and the rest of it's all original stuff. But as I say, it's nowhere even near completion. There's, there's months of work to do on it. And for this, is that is it more them tinkering away in the studio rather than you laying your bits down? No, no, I've, I've, I've done, needless to say, I've done all my bits f***ing two years ago. They do like a noodle, these boys, though. So they're just hanging around, they're twiddling their fingers? Well, they are proper cosmic. Right. They only work to the cosmic timetable. I mean, you smile when I'm saying that. I'm not f***ing joking. They're like, they're the most cosmic people I've ever known. So the the clock and the numerical order of time doesn't apply to these cats. They just kind of, I call it f***ing about. They call it experimenting. It's, it's really is f***ing about. It sounds like a typical producer. Works at night. Well, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a producer. I'll, I get it done. In and out, put the kettle on. That's me. Um, the X Factor, I know you've turned it down many times. Oh, only once. Only once. Okay. And the Radio Times asked you the other week whether you do it for a million quid. And you said, I don't know, what did you say? I don't know, what did I say? Well, I think you said a million quid's not a bad amount of money. It's a good amount of money. If you get it after tax, it is. A million pound? Have you ever yeah. had a million pound? No. Believe you me. I sh- gives you Can you lend on. me some? I should lend you some million pounds. Yeah. I don't have spare millions, unfortunately. I've got some change in me bag somewhere. I'll do. Yeah, I've got about 78 pence. <laughs> I'd get you a curly whirly, big family bag of crisps and f*** all else, really. Are you reconsidering your thoughts on the X Factor now, given your daughter's pressure? No. It's not something I I want to do, you know. I don't want to be on television. I don't like being on television when I'm playing live. I don't even like being on Jules Holland or any of them programmes. I don't don't like it. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, It's not for me. So being on TV every week, although it would be undoubtedly brilliant for you to watch it, it would be a waste of my time. Not that I think I'm above it. Or, you know, it's just like I don't want to... That's not the kind of thing I want to get involved in. I'm into music. But you are charismatic. I think it would come across <laughs> very well on the TV. In a kind of sort of deadpan way. What did you want me to say to that? Yes, I am. God, my charisma levels are just f***ing... It's just too much. It's really coming through, through now. Well. like a yeah. supernova. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm just me. So anything else like The Voice, that would be out as well. What? Mm-hmm. The Voice is the new BBC TV show, which is like... Oh, I'm X-Men. not interested in any, any, anything. The only thing I would consider doing for the BBC is if Russell Brand decides to move back to England and, and we relaunch the radio show. I f- love doing that radio show. But uh, other than that, no, I'm too busy, like that too busy being brilliant. OK. Well, doing it takes up a lot of my time. Well, let's talk about tonight's brilliance, your live music, and on the lineup for V Festival as well. Do you slum it at, the, at these sort of things now, well, or have you got a hotel mean, room slum. with a, your name on it? Uh, the V Festival? Mm. You mean camping? Yeah. Well, depends, it depends what's happening the next day. If we've got a gig somewhere else, you just... I don't want to spoil your illusions here, but when you know you go to... Have you been to Glastonbury? Yeah. Not everybody camps, not all the bands. The bands go in and out. So a band that's playing at 2 o'clock on a Friday might get there at 11 o'clock in the morning and leave at half three and that's it. They're not all backstage frying sausages and marshmallows. That's not how it works. No, 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 no. We've got work to do. There's okay. another festival to do somewhere else, probably. But I don't know. V Festival, I don't know, probably in and out I would have thought. Oh, I'm going to see the Stone Roses, obviously. I was going to ask you about it. Because you moved your slots to see the Stone Roses. Well, no, I didn't. No, no, no. I was supposed to be headlining the tent or the second stage, whatever it is. I think they have a tent at V Festival. And I said, well, when I found out they were headlining, I was like, well, I don't want to do it if they're headlining because I want to see them. I'd rather go and watch them than play. And I got my wish in the end. Fantastic. Have you seen them before? The Stone Roses? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, obviously. Well, because yeah. I, I saw them about 15 years ago and they were rubbish. I think it was their last gig and before they broke up. And they, what, Reading Festival? Yeah, and it wasn't good. It wasn't a good gig, no. But I've seen them a lot of times. I've seen them in, on and off from, from 1985 onwards. Right. I've seen them do some great shows. I've seen them do some psychedelic f- 
fucking mad. But, you know, they're a great band. I can't wait to see them again. And tonight, your gig, final date on your UK tour? It's the final date on this particular leg, yeah. It's been good fun apart from, you know, all the gigs have been great apart from maybe the O2 in London, which is a bit, that's a bit big. Apart from that, it's all been good. And this is going out at half past seven tonight as your fans make their way to the NIA. We're going to broadcast it at half past seven. With that in mind, is there anything they should know as they're in their cars before they arrive? I would really, although you're coming to the show and you've obviously bought a ticket and probably... Hopefully you've downloaded the album or bought the album. As much as I appreciate that, really what makes the difference is the merchandise. <laughs> if you could, um, before you leave, or when you get here, or even join the gig, just go out of your way and try and spend a little money on the merchandise store because, you know, the more money you spend on T-shirts, the better my children's education will be. Uh, go, you know the less idiots there'll be in the world. So think on when you're buying that pint of lager at the uh, at the beer stall. Have a little look on the merchandise stall for your old Uncle Noel. Just think of all the things I've done for you. Think of them. All the songs I wrote for you. One T-shirt, seven quid. F bargain. And what will you yourself be doing at half seven? What time is it now? Uh, it's about six o'clock now. Six o'clock in an hour and a half. I will be maybe watching the support band. No, they won't be on till late. I will be. I've got some friends here from Manchester, so I shall maybe catch up with those and uh, generally just being a godlike genius. Maybe floating, just hovering above the floor, maybe six inches. Might get me cloud out, float around a bit on my cloud. It's hard work, obviously, keeping that up. I said at the top of the interview, it's. It's tough at the top. Yeah. And if there was one rumour about you going around, what would you like it to be? I've got a massive c***. Noel Gallagher, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>